Hi, uh, welcome to this lecture. We are we are going to talk about ultrasonic sensor. So let us see the slide. Uh, what exactly ultrasonic sensor is and how we can fabricate it and what are the application of this particular ultrasonic sensor. So if you see the slide, the ultrasonic sensor uh, you can directly buy uh, it as the commercially available. Uh, we can have HCSR04 is one of the example, uh, but ultrasonic sensor are electron devices that utilizes sound waves beyond the human hearing generally between 20 kilohertz to 2 megahertz and is used for measuring distance or detect objects. The, they operate based on principle for echolocation like how bats will navigate or how whales are navigating right. Uh, so, these sensors emit ultrasonic waves measure the time taken for waves to bounce back after hitting a object An application includes distance measurement you can see in the car right when it uh, when you are taking a reverse uh, there is some kind of sound that is because of ultrasonic sensor indicated into the uh, modern cars. Uh, it, it can detect object and more in uh, it can have a lot of application in industries. This is an example of how the uh, uh, radiation type wavelength is there when it come to radio waves or microwave or infrared wave, visible light, ultraviolet, x-rays, gamma rays. Uh, you can also understand the frequency uh, right from 10 to the power 4 and power 20. Uh, the temperature of objects at which this radiation is most intense wavelength is uh, emitted. Uh, and then uh, the evolution of this particular ultrasound, uh, ultrasonic sensor, uh, uh, the story is very interesting where uh, uh, um, the uh, experiment was done by a Swiss uh, physicist engineer, uh, Jean Daniel and Charles uh, uh, Francois, uh, uh, a mathematician uh, using an underwater bell in attempt to calculate the speed of sound in the waters of Lake uh, Geneva. Uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the what, what happened is that the evolution of ultrasound encompasses centuries starting with the ancient acoustic contribution from figures like Pythagoras and Aristotle, Galileo and Mersenne laid the foundation understanding a pitch frequency correlation. However, during World War I, Paul and high used high frequency waves for submarine detection and uh, Sergei Sokolov proposed flaw detection concepts in 1928. In 1940-50s saw independent development by uh, Firestone, Sprawl and Trost and global competition ensued in 1950s uh, uh, with the uh, uh, with Kroc Kramer and Dutch entering the market. The invention of piezoelectric materials played a crucial role. Again, piezoelectric material like the material that you apply pressure change in voltage, right? For example, quads uh, uh, is piezoelectric material, aluminum nitride is piezoelectric material, zinc oxide is piezoelectric material, um, PVDF is piezoelectric material. And in 1980s and 90s, particularly, witnessed advancement in miniaturization leading to widespread use of ultrasonic sensors in consumer electronics. So, what happened in this particular experiment is that they use the bell uh, and they measure the uh, how much time it takes for or hearing the sound of a bell. Uh, to that they also fire a gun uh, and to see that uh, what is the sound at which they can hear the uh, fire shot. They calculated the distance and the distance was calculated almost uh, correctly uh, as of what um, uh, theoretically uh, we know now. Alright, so uh, emitting sound waves, uh, the sensor here is a transmitter and there can be a receiver. So, this ultrasound sensors or transducers can be uh, trans receivers tran uh, uh, material or devices. The transmitter will transmit the sound, it will hit the object and the sound will get reflected and the receiver will receive the sound. Uh, so, the principle is emitting sounds, bouncing off objects, measuring the return time, calculating the distance and uh, showing it the output. So, uh, emitting sounds between 20 kilohertz and 65 kilohertz, it bounces the object, it measures, uh, we, we can measure the return time, the sensor measures the time it takes from emitted sound to bounce back after hitting the object. This time interval is extremely short, typically of microseconds. We can calculate distance, uh, it does not, uh, does this by multiplying the time it takes for a sound waves to go to object and then coming back which by the speed of sound and the output data is the sensor provides the distance information as an output which can be used in various applications such as obst obstacle detection object positioning or navigations. The types of ultrasonic sensors are following, one is analog, second is diffuse sensor, third one is through thorough beam sensors and last one is retro reflective sensors. The first one analog output sensors provides a, a continuous voltage output proportional to the distance object. This allows for more precise and control uh, and integration with, your, with other systems. Uh, the diffuse sensors uh, works on a principle of uh, combining trans receiver or transmitter and receiver into single housing. It can detect the objects by measuring the 
reflected sound wave. It is suitable for short wave uh, range applications and less sensitive to object orientation. Uh, the thorough beam sensors uh, employ a separate transmitter and a receiver as you can see that one is transmitter, one is receiver T or R or R uh, or T or R right uh, and object detection occurs when the sound wave is interrupted between them. Suppose uh, uh, a sound wave is sent from transmitter towards receiver and if there is an object in between them right then this uh, uh, gets interrupted. Ideal for long range applications uh, precise object detection. There is a retro reflective sensors in which uh, uh, in which the uh, uh, it is similar to diffuse sensors where there is a transmitter and receiver into the single housing. However, uh, the, the a reflector is used behind the object to improve the strength of reflected uh, sound waves. This allows for longer range uh, detection range and better performance in dusty or noisy environments. So, piezoelectric transducers uh, we have functional and uh, material the function is the heart of the sensor converting electrical signal to the uh, waves and vice versa. This is your piezoelectric material that is why we say that a piezoelectric transducer is a heart of this particular uh, sensor. Material that is used is synchronium titanate, lead synchronium titanate is one of the uh, best material for piezoelectricity. Uh, PZT is called PZT. Uh, however, people use different kind of material to uh, understand the properties of the trans transducer. Um, uh, the control unit which is a, a brain of the sensor is managing the tasks such as generating signals for sound wave emission, amplifying the received echo signals, also processes signals from the object or distance measurement. Housing is for, for protecting the internal components from various environment uh, and it is chosen based on application and environment. It can be plastic casing, metal or combination. The additional component depends on the type of sensor that we are using. For example, for retro reflective sensors uh, 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 if you use reflectors then the it will enhance the reflected sound wave for better range and performance. There is a ADC that will convert your analog signal to a digital formatting. Uh, the operating rate there are sensor parameters that we need to consider a uh, particular when you talk about ultrasonic sensor there is operating range uh, beam angle the beam angle generally is uh, uh, about 15 degrees operating frequency it can be from 20 kilohertz to 200 kilohertz uh, blind zone at a, this is a minimum distance where the sensor will not work power consumption is amount of power required for the sensor to operate environment factors like temperature humidity can and dust can affect the sensor performance the output uh, of the sensor can be digital or analog depending on type and the function functionality. Uh, the performance parameters are accuracy, resolution, response time. Uh, the accuracy is uh, uh, it refers to sensor's ability to measure the actual distance to an object. The resolution is uh, uh, defined as the smallest change in the distance that sensor can detect. And finally, the response time is the time it takes for sensor to detect an object and provide an output signal. There are selection criteria that we need to uh, also consider. For example, sensing properties, carrier signal, electrical switch performance, body type, electrical connection. So, what are these things? So, for sensing performance we have to see the rated, rated operating distance how much the sensor can detect, repeatability is how accurately it can detect, repeatable results are there. Uh, if you do measurements 10 times what are the output for the same distance that we are measuring. Carrier signal is a blind zone distant from sensor phase uh, where no objects can be detected. Transmitter frequency is range of broadcasted and received signals. Electrical power uh, uh, options are AC or DC. Load configurations can be AC or DC with NPR or PNP DC load options. Wire configurations includes 2 wire, 3 wire, 3 wire PNP, 3 wire NPN, 4 wire NPN, 4 wire PNP. Body material can be cylinder with a threaded barrel or one piece rectangular or block shaped sensors. Now, we also talk about piezoelectric micro machine ultrasound transducers which can be fabricated using micro uh, engineering technologies. The electrical connections can be flexible cable connectors and terminals for taking the signals from the transducers uh, to the outside world uh, or outside electronics. Signal generation, uh, we use a trigger pulse, the sensor receives a trigger pulse and uh, when it receives a trigger pulse, uh, it will uh, generate a burst of acoustic signals and this acoustic signals goes and hits the target and then this burst will come back and when it comes back there is output echo pin. So, uh, the piezoelectric effect is a pulse triggers piezoelectric crystal within the sensor since the crystal vibrates at a specific frequency converting electrical signal uh, into ultrasound waves. The sound emission and reflection transducer uh, uh, is by vibrating crystals as a transducer the ultrasound waves are emitted uh, through the sensor housing into the environment and when it is 
it gets interacted with the object the sound waves encounter an object they are partially reflected back. Uh, the echo reception is where the sounds reflected are received by the same piezoelectric crystal and the piezoelectric reverse is where the sound waves causing the crystal to vibrate again, but at a lower amplitude due to the loss of energy uh, that is traveled and reflection the vibration converts the sound energy back into electrical energy. So, like this this is electrical energy this is acoustic energy uh, it gets heat to an object and it is return back um, and when it returns back right you can see the burst of signals and finally, you can look at the output. The output voltage change uh, uh, is the varying pressure of the received sound waves translates to a voltage functions across piezoelectric material. Now, we need to also calibrate this device right. So, what are different kind of calibration and mostly potentiometer can be used to calibrate it. When you buy a, a transducer you will see the output is directly in terms of distance measurement or some data, but the data is not like uh, how the output of sensor is output of transducer or sensor is always in terms of change in resistance or a voltage or current and that we need to convert this analog input uh, to a digital output and then finally, you see the digital output right. So, the calibration can be 0 point calibration and that is to ensure the accurate measurement by accounting for initial offset or errors, sensitivity adjustment which allows the fine tuning of sensor using the uh, in a different environment conditions, temperature compensation ultrasonic sensor may be sensitive to temperature and calibration factors are applied to composite temperature variations and to maintain the accuracy. The cal calibration methods can vary depending on sensor type and manufacturer, potentiometer adjustment is manually adjusting a physical knob which is this physical knob right um, uh, to on the sensor to fine tune the output and there is another which is called software configuration where using software tools provided by the manufacturer to adjust the internal parameter through the communication interface. Uh, this is an example of how sensor looks uh, sensor output looks on Arduino IDE. Uh, so, we can use this HC SR04 sensor and we also have uh, it is very simple to use and you can measure see the distance that it can measure. Uh, there are different ways of fabricating the ultrasound transducer. Uh, for example, uh, thin film deposition technique is where uh, you can see that uh, we can use a PZT material. So, you have a, a, a substrate on this substrate you uh, spin uh, you deposit platinum and then you pattern the platinum over that you deposit PZT and then you pattern PZT over that you can have another platinum uh, layer. So, you can see that this platinum layer extends like this the bottom layer is here right. So, now you have a piezoelectric material sandwiched between the bottom electrode which is platinum and the top electrode which is also platinum right. So, this is your PZT. Now, after this uh, you, you can have uh, a gold and on the gold you can have polymide and then you can uh, release this whole transducer from your substrate. This becomes a flexible uh, piezoelectric micro machine ultrasound transducer or just a piezoelectric ultrasound transducer. Uh, the another way of doing it is by using the micro machining technique uh, which uh, uh, which can be used like you can start with a uh, SOI wafer then you can have oxidized silicon uh, uh, oxides oxide growth using thermal oxidation then you can uh, uh, deposit titanium and platinum platinum is used to improve the addition of platinum on the substrate then you can do a, a lift off technique uh, you can have a PZT followed by uh, you can have your top film and you can uh, do a uh, patterning of that and then you can do bottom DRI uh, silicon edge so that you have your uh, ultrasonic transducer. So, in general if I want to tell you uh, uh, the ultrasound transducer is nothing, but you start, start with a silicon wafer ok. Start with a silicon wafer you can have your oxide layer. So, it becomes an oxidized silicon wafer and in this oxidized silicon wafer what you do is you deposit deposit a metal right this is your metal for bottom electrode. Then what you do is you pattern this metal using lithography technique. So, we will pattern the metal using lithography which becomes our bottom electrode ok. So, this is our bottom electrode ok bottom electrode this is our metal 1 uh, metal 1 bottom electrode. On this what we will do is we will deposit your piezoelectric material let us example of PZT all right lead zinc coronium patinate. Now, we will pattern this PZT such that such that 
it will make the contact on the bottom electrode it will make the contact on the bottom electrode and is like this okay now you should understand this is a 2d so this bottom electrode extends all the way like this right it is a 2d hmm. now on this what we will do is we will deposit metal 2 metal 2 and metal 1 is same material okay metal 2 and we pattern this so to have so to have your oxidized silicon wafer with bottom electrode with PZT and with top electrode. Somewhere top electrode you can have like this or you can just uh, Okay. So, you can either extend it all the way like this, so that becomes easier. So, now what you do is you have your PCT, so you have your bottom electrode, you have your top electrode and you have your PCT which is your piezoelectric transducer. Now, next step what you do is you do a micro machining, you do a micro machining. So, when you have to do micro machining what we will do? we can use DRI ok. So, when you apply a pressure this this diaphragm will bend ok. This diaphragm bends and that is why there is a change in the voltage that you see across the top and bottom electrode. All right. So, this is a principle as simple as that you can sandwich the material sandwich the material which is a PZT between top and bottom electrodes right to get your piezoelectric film. There are different fabrication methods that are uh, upcoming for example, uh, we can use stereolithography uh, 3D printing is an imaging technology that allows the creation of customized sensor. The materials uh, extrusion is by fusing together layers of material to build the sensor structure. Hybrid techniques includes the PZT film deposited on micro machine silicon substrate for high performance miniaturization. When I say micro machine silicon substrate this is example of just one diaphragm, but you can have many diaphragms on this kind of silicon substrate and on each of these diaphragm you can have your piezoelectric material. The integration of electric components with sensor structure using 3D printing will enhance the functionality. There are applications of this particular ultrasound uh, ultrasonic uh, imaging ultrasound uh, imaging first is in medical imaging where it is widely employed in ultrasound imaging uh, for non invasive visualization of internal body structures. Uh, it can also be used for therapeutic applications for example, high intensity focus ultrasound is utilized for therapeutic purposes such as tumor ablation. If you read some literature you will understand that this uh, uh, ultrasound uh, focus ultrasound is recently used for uh, for for destroying tumor without uh, from non invasively without actually uh, opening the skull alright. And uh, this is a, uh, a new technique uh, which is used for therapy. Uh, for understanding the blood flow monitoring we use Doppler ultrasound and here uh, Doppler sensors access the blood flow by detecting the frequency swift of reflected sound waves from moving blood cells. This technology aids in assessing vascular conditions identifying abnormalities in circulation. So, not only ultrasound can be used for imaging, but also for therapy and for blood flow monitoring. Now, other applications are also there for example, we want to measure the level uh, of the oil in a, in a tanks, you want to understand the leak, leak detections. Uh, uh, in the in the pipe oil pipe right then ultrasound transducers can be of extremely important uh, uh, devices that can be used to understand the level of liquids can be used to understand the uh, leaks that are there in the uh, in the oil pipe in the water pipe right it can also be used in automobiles for example parking assistance uh, side impact airbag deployment uh, it can be used for adaptive cruise control so the applications are many 
right and finally when you want to understand the H HCSR04 because I always want uh, students to take uh, an example by uh, doing experiments. See theory is one thing but when you buy a transducer how to uh, implement this transducer along with a small electronic module and test it then you will have more understanding of that particular transducer or a sensor. So, working voltage is about 5 volts, current is about 15 milli ampere, frequency is 40 hertz, maximum range is 4 centimeter, minimum age is um, uh, 2 centimeter. Uh, we need to just see uh, this particular value again, uh, so see the data sheet and then it may be an error, just look into that. Trigger input signal can be 10 micron TTL pulse, uh, dimensions are 45 by 20 by 15 millimeter. Uh, now, here is an example that you can try at home. Uh, uh, how to connect your ultrasound transducer with Arduino board and once you have that you can easily uh, do this run this see I also help I will help you with the program also right. So, what else you want you have the circuit you have the program just execute it all right. So, you can run the code and you can see the output voltage if you put any transducer. So, with that we will end our lecture here. Uh, I hope that a bit of ultrasonic sensor, ultrasound transducer is what you learn right. Uh, we can use different techniques, micro machine technique, uh, we can use the DRI to create diaphragms and miniaturize the transducers. We can use the existing commercial transducer, use Arduino, connect it, program it. Transducers have different applications in imaging therapy, uh, it can be used in oils um, leak detections, it can be used in automotive, uh, it can be used um, uh, in, in blood flow measurement and many more. So, with this we will uh, stop here and I uh, will see you next class, till then you take care, bye for now.